Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 24 of the AI series where we're going to implement another skill scriptable object, the poison gas skill. This one should be pretty easy based on the last two that we've done because we're going to reuse components of both of the last two videos where we implemented the fire breath and the ice lance to implement this new ability. This is going to be an instant cast skill whenever we come in range of the player and it's off cooldown, we will spawn a cloud of poison gas at our player's location where it will deal area damage over time to our player. Now that sounds really familiar because the fire breath skill we implemented the area damage whenever the player was in front of the enemy whenever they were breathing out the fire breath. And it being instant cast is what we did in the last video where the enemy would shoot ice lances out at the player while they were still moving. This is gonna be just combining those two and spawning an object at the player's location instead of the enemy's location. If you watched the last two videos, this one should be a very natural tutorial to follow without any surprises. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. In case this is the first video that you're watching in this sub-series about implementing enemy skills and abilities, we're using the free Unity app asset Unity Particle Pack, which is actually made by Unity, to generate some of these effects. When we open up the Unity Asset Store and search Unity Particles, it's this first one, Unity Particle Pack, we import only the effect examples and disable everything else. It gives us a warning saying it's going to override our project settings, but if we disable the last checkbox here about the project settings, it won't do that. In the effect examples folder, I'll open up the smoke and steam effects prefabs and drag the poison gas into the scene. On the root particle system, I'll open up the shape module, change the shape to circle, and set the scale to be 3. We see it's facing the wrong direction, so I'll set the rotation to be 90 degrees on the x-axis. On the child particle systems, I'll do the same thing, opening up the shape module and setting the scale this time to be 3, and I'll notice it's not the same size. And also the 3 from the main particle system was a little bit large. So we'll go back to the main particle system, select that, and set the scale to be 1.5. The important thing that I didn't notice actually when I was implementing this was the radius of the circle was set to 1 on the main particle system and 0.48 on the child particle systems. I was really confused why the sizes weren't the same when I set the scale to be 3 on both of them. That's the reason why. I'll configure both child particle systems to have the scale of 3 facing the same direction as the main particle system and to be in that circle shape. The particle system itself though isn't enough to signal to the player that they'll take damage if they go in here. It's nice to give the player a notification with maybe how we're going to implement it is a sprite render, a circle, to tell them hey if you enter in this circle you will be taking damage. I'll right click 2D object sprite on the root particle system and I'll select this circle border 4 that actually came from the essential UI pack. I think it's a really good indication to the player that hey this is a danger area. I'll rotate it so it's also rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis. I'll set the y to be a little offset from the floor so we don't have z fighting and then I'll scale it down to be the same size as our particle system is. I'll also change the color to be kind of this greenish color like the poison gas particle system has. Once it looks like the right size, on this sprite I will add a sphere collider. It automatically sizes itself to be a good size. I'll change the layer to be an enemy attack radius and make sure to mark is trigger as true. The last thing we'll do on this game object is add the area damage script that we created when we did the fire breath skill that was AI series part 22 if you want to see the implementation of this script. On the root particle system we'll add the poolable object. Since this is a game object we'd like to spawn as a result of a skill we're using object pooling for that so we'll attach the a poolable object so this can be spawned by that skill. Then I'll rename the particle system poison gas skill and drag it as a prefab variant into the same folder that the poison gas particle system came from. I'll then open up the assets scripts enemy skills folder and create a new C sharp script called poison gas skill and if we open up visual studio with poison gas skill we'll make it extend the skill scriptable object class we'll add the create asset menu attribute with the file name of poison gas skill and the menu name of scriptable object slash skills slash poison gas. We'll add a public float duration, set that to 10 by default, a public float tick rate, set that to 0.3 by default, a public float range to be 6 by default, and a public poolable object prefab that we will later link up to be that 
particle system that we just created. We'll then, as always, do a public override skill scriptable object scale up for level that takes the scaling in the level. We will create a new poison gas skill instance called scaled skill. We'll scale up the base values for level and we will assign all of the variables that we have on this class specifically that are not on a skill scriptable object to the scaled skill. And then we'll return the scaled skill. Then we'll implement the public override bool can use skill, passing in the enemy player in level. We'll return base.canUseSkill, skill, and if we're within range, so that's vector three distance enemy transform position, player transform position less than or equal to their range. Then we'll implement public override void use skill, where we call base use skill, and then start a coroutine on the enemy. We'll call that spawn poison gas, passing in the enemy and the player. Then let's implement that coroutine private i enumerator spawn poison gas that accepts the enemy and the player. We'll do an object pool, pool equals object pool that create instance, where we pass in the prefab and the number that we would like it to spawn initially. And remember, now our object pools return us a shared instance. So this does not always create a new object pool. It will get us the reference to the previous pool that we've created if this is the second or third or whatever, the not first time that we're calling this. We'll then do poolable object instance equals pool.getObject. We'll check that the instance is not null. If it is, we will set the instance transform position to be at the player's position. Then we'll get the area damage from our instance by instance.get component and children area damage and we'll set up the damage and the tick rate to be whatever our poison gas skill scriptable object has set up on it. We'll yield return a new wait for seconds based on the duration. Then we'll disable that poison gas cloud. We'll set the use time to be the current time and we'll set is activating to be false. We're doing it this way because we want to make sure that it goes on cooldown after our poison gas has despawned. If we just implemented all of this in the use skill, then we can't do that yield return new wait for seconds and the skill would immediately go on cooldown after we spawned it. And potentially, depending on the duration, we could have multiple of these skills up at the same time. And that may be fine in your game. You just need to consider the balancing of your skill and how you want your skill to behave. If we hop back to the Unity editor, I'll right click, create scriptable object skills poison gas, and then we'll drag the poison gas skill variant prefab to the prefab reference. I'll change the cooldown to be 15, we'll leave the damage as 5, the unlock level as 1, the duration at 10, the tick rate to 0 0.3, and the range to be 6. We'll leave all of that to be the defaults besides the cooldown. I'll then select the basic enemy, give them this skill, and then click play. I'll fast forward and run around a little bit, waiting for the basic enemy to come find me, wait for the skill to be almost off cooldown, and there it goes. We see it spawns and stays for some time, and then it'll eventually disappear after that duration has ended. Perfect. Since this is the last video I'm doing in the Skill Scriptable Object subseries, why don't we go ahead and put it all together to see how does it look if all of our enemies are using skills at us at the same time. I'll select the basic enemy and give them two skills. I'll give them the jump skill and I'll give them the fire breath skill. I'll give the tall enemy the same skills, the jump skill and the fire breath skill. I'll select both the range and the homing enemy and I'll give them both the ice lance skill. And then I'll find the flying enemy, give them one skill, and I'll give them the poison gas skill. On the enemy manager, we'll set it to spawn five enemies again. And then we'll click play. We'll see the basic enemy jumps at me, the tall enemy also does, they both use fire breath, poison gas skills flying around, a lot of the ice lances are shooting. I think it looks a lot more crazy, a lot more stuff's going on, and it looks like a lot harder game than what we had before. I think it looks really cool. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to implement this instant cast spawn area damage at target location skill that combines the last two videos together. I also hope with the last four videos, you understand how to implement skills for your enemies where they can learn them over time and be activated with different conditions. We've looked at a variety of different skill abilities that work very differently between one another. And I think we've covered all the core concepts that you need to implement a really large variety of skills. So I hope with the last four videos together, you understand how to do that. If you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.